The lecture phase introduced the Stone Dutchman Repair Guide specific to the scope of the work of this building. Care and consideration of the original stone facade was emphasized along with established trade practices for the process of a Stone Dutchman Repair. Participants were given the opportunity to ask questions to clarify the intention of the lecture and the technical aspects of the procedures for the best practices on this project. The participants were then also released to the scaffolding to start the hands-on work with the tools and become familiar with the Stone Dutchman repair techniques discussed in the lecture. This illustration actually shows the large area of the window jam on the east elevation with the previous Portland cement mortar patch. This was the area selected for the Dutchman removal and replacement and we used the reclaimed stone from a remove and replace training earlier in an operation previously conducted at the site on the same elevation. This mason is shown carefully surveying the damaged area and marking for a square cut for the Dutchman repair area to a uniform depth of one and a half inches. Any loose or fractured stone is also selected for removal and planned out in the cutting out and removal process. Next, the selected area is given relief cuts to a depth of a maximum capability of a six inch right angle diamond saw. The mason can be seen using the fine supercutter tool with a diamond sickle blade completing the relief cuts at the corners without overcutting or damaging the surrounding area. In this sequence of photos, the removal of the stone is done with a pneumatic chisel with great care given not to chip or spall the surrounding stone areas. The final cutting is done with a tooth chisel to increase surface bonding of the natural hydraulic lime, which is the material used to increase the strength of the Dutchman repair once placed. A series of one half inch holes are drilled in key locations in order to place a 3 8 inch threaded stainless steel rod to receive and reinforce the replacement stone. The rods are set three quarters of an inch in exposure to receive the matching holes drilled in the replacement stone piece. The stone dust is actually captured from the drilling process to be used in the natural hydraulic lime material formulation for attachment of the new stone piece. Note the small wood dowels placed loosely on the bottom of the cut out area to ensure proper spacing of the horizontal bed joint of the stone Dutchman repair. The Dutchman stone piece is cut from harvested stone from the same area on the same elevation. The measurements of the actual replacement are drawn to a cardboard template and transferred to the stone to be cut as can be seen here on the image to the right. The piece is then cut to size and then the corresponding one half inch holes are drilled into the bond side of the stone. The stone is then recut as required to fit the cutout area. Precise and uniform spacing is the hallmark for an excellent stone Dutchman repair. The stone is laid on a piece of carpet or other soft material to protect the face while grooves are cut into the bond side. These grooves will ensure the enlargement of the stone surface area and promote better adhesion and bond strength. Grooves are also cut into the existing wall surface to receive the piece. The replacement stone is carefully dry fitted to ensure uniform joint size. Wood dowels of the correct joint width are used to space the joints. The stone is cut on the bond side with curved edges to allow the natural hydraulic lime bond mixture to flow around the piece as it's being tapped into position. Once the piece is tapped into position, it should be removed immediately to view the bond side to ensure that all material is touching and there are no void spaces in the bonding mixture. A good test of a true well bonded Dutchman repair is to lightly tap the surface of the repair with a rubber hammer to listen for hollow sounds. 
If the hollow sound exists during this step, the stone must be removed and more material added to that particular area. It is common practice that a typical Dutchman repair may need to be installed and reinstalled up to three to four times before all bonding surfaces are satisfied in pieces larger than five inches. Both the cutout area and the replacement stone are saturated with water to a surface dry condition and given a preliminary coat of natural hydraulic lime bond mixture to ensure the maximum bond strength. The lime mixture is applied to the replacement piece and then firmly tapped into place aligned evenly with the surrounding stone. In this series of photos the replacement piece is carefully cleaned with a damp sponge. The joints are then pointed in and left to cure protected from weather for a minimum of 24 hours. Note the protective painter's tape which is applied to the stone to prevent mortar from smearing the stone surface. All training was in accordance with ASTM E265909 and was delivered in the appropriate ways for the purpose and scope of this particular project. The certificate program and all the accomplishments of the intended learning outcomes were based on a passing standard established through criteria referenced through a method in advance of the assessment being administered.